Okay. So hi everyone. Um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, so my name is Burcu Güldür Erka. Uh, I'm from Turkey, Hacettepe University, Ankara. Uh, so this is a very uh, small part of our research where we use image-based uh, 3D surface reconstruction for cold form steel members and I'll be explaining the reasoning. Uh, so nowadays cold form steel construction is getting uh, more and more popular in Turkey, especially for one or two to three story buildings, school buildings, some um, uh, depots, uh, hospitals, hospital sections actually. Uh, so, uh, but we are not modeling the cold form steel members by using their as is geometry, but rather we're using their design geometry. However, due to production, transportation, and installation uh, problems, there are some imperfections on these cold form steel members, which changes the behavior of the member itself. So we require to get these geometric imperfections and incorporate those into our model to get an actual behavior, to get the actual behavior of the member itself. So here on the right hand side, you can see some uh, common sections. So the basic ones are on the top. So we'll be dealing with a C section, which is on the very top uh, row of our, uh, of this image. Uh, so our objective was to develop a very low cost uh, method to generate 3D surface uh, from 2D images for uh, cold form steel members. So we did this by generating a surface mesh from the images collected. Uh, we compared the uh, measured dimensions with the extracted dimensions from the 3D, uh, 3D surface model that we generated. And we're hoping to, actually we did this, but we don't have the results for this yet, extracting geometric information from the surface data. So the experimental setup is very, very simple. Uh, so we have two plates uh, which are connected with a ball bearing, uh, which allows us to rotate the member with certain angle values. In this case, we are taking 36 pictures. Uh, so it has 36 holes. We're, uh, we're fixing it at every 10 angle, at 10 degrees. And then we take one picture and then we repeat it for different elements. So we are using a Nikon camera. Uh, so this is the one that we have, but any camera will work for this method. So it can be uh, your cell phones as well. Uh, so what we did once we collected the image was to calibrate and the enhance the images. So we calibrated by using the MATLAB calibration um, tool. So basically we had this checkerboard on the side. I will be showing the pictures and then we calibrate it, and then we crop the images, and we change the intensity values to adjust to see a better image. Here you can see, so on the left-hand side is the first image, so we don't have much lightning because it shines on the surface of the cold form steel member because of the metal uh, properties, but we have a pattern on it which we sprayed by uh, black paint so that we will have a pattern and we can uh, combine them together to generate the 3D model. So on the right-hand side, you can see the first one, A, is the cropped image of the original uh, picture taken. The second one is the grayscale one. And the third one is the adjusted image, which is actually, I don't know if it's clear, but it shows the pattern on the image, uh, on the cold form still itself. So the second part of our method was uh, to ensure the key point detection so that we can actually generate the 3D model. So what we did was we, so all in this process is we use open source software so that we wanted to ensure that it's a low cost option for everyone. So what we did was to find the key points and we wanted to find at least 2,000 key points uh, per image so that it will ensure the uh, 3D modeling itself. So we did that as, uh, on the right hand side of the image of so the B, you can see that how they are actually attached to each other, the key points in two successive images that's taken from the sample itself. So then we uh, continue with the 3D mesh generation. We use the mesh room. So this is a photogrammetric pipeline which starts with image insertion and ends with texture mesh generation. So the analysis steps include fixed feature extraction, image matching, structure from motion algorithms, um, camera correction, depth map extraction, depth map filtering, meshing, 
mesh filtering and texturing in total. Uh, so the parameters are not given here what we have chosen for our specific uh, application, but they are easily manipulated in the software itself. And for specific ap applications, you need to change them for your own purposes. <coughs> So here is an output. So you can see like those uh, white uh, blocks are the camera location. So we have 36 of those that are covering the entire perimeter of the object. And in the middle is our point cloud for the cold form steel member. So we did the mesh refinement because the first uh, 3D point cloud we had was a little bit coarse especially the uh, small dimensions where we have the lip in this case, the C-section has a lip on the sides and those lips are like um, four or five millimeters and those parts were really uh, noisy and then we couldn't take data from those but uh, we smoothened the uh, 3D point cloud and we were able to get good results. I will be showing in a section. So how we know that we had good results is because we take hand measurements and uh, so here you can see on the cold form steel member along the length of it, uh, from different points we took measurements and then we compared those measurements with the extracted measurements that we obtained from the point cloud itself. So it's here in the, I don't, oops, sorry. So these are the extracted dimensions. I'll be going back and forth in a second. So if you can look at point A, S1 and S2, you can see it's 48 and 49, and it's the measured one is around 46 and again 46. So this was expected for us because uh, with the point cloud generation, we were expecting some noise, so we expected it to be a little bit larger than it was in the actual sense. But the uh, entire, um, analysis show that we are within the range of 5% error within all dimensions except the lips. We were not able to get the lips for this uh, analysis. So as a conclusion, so we try to focus on developing a low cost methodology that uses 2D images uh, to generate 3D surface match by performing 3D image processing. Uh, so we use the generated mesh to extract the as is dimensions of the CFS member that we're investigating. And we have verified by comparing the measured versus the extracted dimensions that our generated mesh is in uh, good agreement with the as is geometry of the member. So in the future studies, actually it's not a future study anymore, but what we did was to extract the uh, geometric imperfections such as bow, camber, and some uh, cross-sectional anomalies that we have on the member, and then we introduced them into the model to get the actual behavior. And how we did that was uh, we performed experimental setups, like where we push the column test and we did the beam test as well. So it will be another discussion for another presentation, hopefully. So thank you for listening to me. I'll be happy to answer any questions.